morning, children, and welcome to Karen Reads. I'm joining you from my living room in South Berwick, Maine. I hope you're getting outside. It's been beautiful. Uh, it's just been gorgeous. Okay, my book today is called Cackle Cook's Monster Stew. It's written by Patricia Ray Wolf, and I found out that she's done other books, including one that's called A New and Improved Santa, which sounds intriguing, and she lives in Illinois, and it's illustrated by S.D. Schindler, who's done many other children's books, and he lives in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, Monster Stew. In the last cave from the corner, on the last day before Halloween, world-famous Cackle Cook was making her world-famous Monster Stew or would be if she weren't out of the ingredients she needed to make it. Drat, double drat, she said, searching her cupboard. I'm all out of armpit hair. Oh, Igor, my pet, she called. Would you please get me some things I need to make my monster stew? Mumble, grumble, bugaboo. I hate shopping for monster stew, Igor muttered as he read Cackle Cook's list. You can see the bats hanging in their cave. Looks like Igor is playing with one of them. Maybe they're their pets. That makes sense. In a monster cave. Here are the ingredients he needs to buy. An ancient ape's short armpit hair. A half inch square of big brown bear. Six heaping cups of black hat claws excuse me, paws, two dozen dirty dragon claws, 11 large eel eggs, 14 fresh frog legs, a gargoyle tongue with a bump or two. He's busy at the grocery store. Igor dragged the bag of ingredients back to Cackle Cook. Mumble, grumble, boo boo. Here are the things for your monster stew. Cackle Cook dropped the ingredients into the monster sized cooking pot. A, a pear. B, bear square. C, cat paws. D, dragon claws. E, eel eggs. F, frog legs, and G, gargoyle tongue. The brew game began to bubble. Monster stew, monster stew, she sang as she stirred. I love making my monster stew. She slurped a spoonful, 
this tastes good, she said. Something must be missing. She looked at her monster cookbook, then checked her cupboard. Drat, double drat, she said. I'm all out of hobgoblin nose. Oh, Igor, my pet, she called. Would you get some things, please, for my monster stew? Mumble, grumble, bugaboo. I hate shopping for monster to stew. Igor muttered as he looked at Cackle Cook's new list. One ho Here's his list of ingredients. One hobgoblin's knobby nose, nine or ten iguana toes, three large jars of jellyfish jelly, a piece of pocket from a kangaroo belly, twelve leaping lizard scales, two mangy monkey tails, the brightest feather from a nightingale, a giant ogre's leather shoe, porcupine quills, quite a few. And it looks like Igor is stealing a shoe right off that big ogre. I wonder if he'll get away with it. Igor dragged the back of bag of ingredients back to Cackle Cook. Mumble, grumble, bugaboo. Here are more things for your monster stew. Cackle Cook emptied the bag into the monster sized cooking pot. H. Hobgoblin nose. I. Iguana toes. J. Jellyfish jelly. K, kangaroo belly, L, lizard scales, M, monkey tails, N, nightingale feather, O, ogre shoe leather, and P, porcupine, porcupine quills. The brew, the brew bubbled higher. Monster stew, monster stew, she sang as she stirred. I love making my monster stew. We can see the big shoe going into the kettle. She slurped another spoonful. This still tastes good. She said, something must be missing. She looked in her monster cookbook, then checked her cupboard. Drat, double drat, she said. I'm all out of quail wings. Oh, Igor, my pet, she called. I just need a few more things to make my monster stew. Mumble, grumble. Bugaboo, I hate shopping for monster stew, Igor muttered as he looked at the list. Here's the list. Two large wings from a spotted quail four round rings of a raccoon tail, 16 shimmering spider webs, 22 slimy brown toad heads, a pair of ghoul's long underwear, five stringy strands of vampire hair, one wide strip 
of werewolf skin, three sharp tins of Zithius fin, the hairy hump from the neck of a yak, a dusty clump from the zombie's back. And it looks like Igor is getting a dusty clump from his own back because he's a zombie. You can see him reaching back. At last, I'm finally through, Igor said, tearing up the shopping list. He dragged the bag of ingredients back to Cackle Cook. Here's everything else you need for your monster stew. Cackle Cook added the ingredients to the bubbling broth in the monster-sized cooking pot. Q for quail wings, R for raccoon rings, S for spider webs, T for toad heads, U for underwear, V for vampire hair, W for werewolf skin, X for Zithius fin, Yak for, Y for Yak hump, and Z for zombie clump. Now she's standing on the stool. She has to get up so high to dump all the ingredients in. The pot boiled over as she tasted the brew. Yuck! She shouted. It's just right. Monster stew, monster stew, she said. What should I do with my monster stew? Feed it to us monsters, of course, said Igor, as he reached for his bowl. Cackle Cook opened the door to her world-famous restaurant. A long line of monsters waited outside. Come and get it, she called. Monster stew, monster stew, Igor said as he ate. I love eating monster stew. Some interesting looking monsters. Okay, I also have something interesting for you today. It's a poem, and it, it's written on purpose with some nonsense words in it, written by Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, which is such a fantastical tale. Um, I think you'll understand this even with some of the made up words. And I would challenge you to write a poem like it yourself using made up words. Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borrowed groves and the mome rass Outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jib jib bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested, rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, 
the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the Tulsi wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjous day, kalu kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borrow grows and the mome grass upgrave. Okay, we always read poems twice. So I'm going to read it a second time. Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoes and the mome wraths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jib-jib bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the Tulsi wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjous day, kalu kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borer groves, and the mown grass outgrave. Okay, really good to be with you again. Um, and I will see you next time on Car and Read. Bye-bye.